Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> so today we're talking about sales fundamentals. And um, basically, we're going to spend about 20% of this workshop talking about strategy and 80% talking about mindset. And this is the only workshop of this kind that we do during the year because mindset is not really something that we specialize in. People tend to come to us with a good mindset or not. <laughs> and there's not a lot we can do about it except, you know, that we can turn down clients that we think need to spend some time, uh, you know, working on uh, their life, their situation, their their attitude, their whatever. Um, you know, if somebody doesn't seem like a good fit for us, we will um, tell them that and, uh, you know, suggest that they work with Dr. Sherry Friesinger or, you know, one of the other side psychologists uh, in the aviation industry and things like that that can help people get their, their mind right, right? Okay. So, um, all right. So, first of all, we're going to talk about strategy. And one of the very first strategic things that we can do is introductions. So, there's a way to do an introduction that is really effective, and there's a way to do an introduction that is not really effective. Um, so, what we're going to do today is just, you know, pretend that you're at a networking event that is not necessarily for your profession or niche. So let's say it's like a rotary meeting or a chamber of commerce meeting or something. So there's like aviation people and non-aviation people, people who don't have a clue what you're doing, you know, dentists and lawyers and other people in the room. You know, they're not idiots, but they just don't know the terminology of what it is that, that we do, right? Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce ourselves. We're going to do a role-playing exercise. So um, basically, we're at a, a networking event, and I'm going to walk up to John and Mark, who are sitting around the punch table, and I'm going to introduce myself. And uh, then John gets to do it, and then Mark gets to do it, right? And if you have an introduction already to go, you can use that. But if you don't have an introduction that you are comfortable with, um, you know, there's a little outline here that... Uh, works really well for a mixed group. So um, anyway, so I walk up to John and Mark at the punch table. So hi, I'm Paula Williams. How are you guys doing? Good. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, I help aviation companies sell more of their stuff. I don't know if either of you is involved in aviation, uh, but I help them by doing marketing services. But uh, what do you guys do? I don't know. Who do you want to go first? We're at a networking event. Nobody's going to decide who's going to go first, right? <laughs> We're not going to uh, have somebody emceeing this conversation. So whoever uh, feels Mark comfortable. Perry. Talking. Okay. I'm Mark Perry, Global Aircraft Consultant Group, and I uh, do certified aircraft appraisals. What's an aircraft appraisal? I mean, why would you do an aircraft appraisal? Is that for airlines or something? or? Yeah, for financing, legal reason reasons, um, financing, mm -hmm. and um, similar to uh, similar uh, to the uh, housing market uh, appraisals. Oh, cool! Yeah, that's a good analogy. That makes sense. I'm John Williams, and I uh, <laughs> assist Paula in. Uh, Helping people sell more of their products and services in the aviation industry. And, uh, the way I do that is because I'm the cyber tech and play the role of CFO in the company. And she does all the selling. She's the rock star. So you do things like fixing our emails when they're bouncing and stuff like that. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Amazing. Well, it's nice to meet you both. Um, I need the hand behind the cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, he's the hand behind the cup of coffee. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> he did that this morning. He poured me a cup of coffee while I was in a meeting. And, you know, it was just kind of cool because, uh, you know, it's the just the hand is all you see. So, um, yeah, anyway. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. So a lot of people, when they come to us for uh, sales coaching, they want to know exactly what words to say. You know, what's the outline? how do I do this precisely, you know, and uh, we worked with people who are, um, as an example, 
fighter pilots and they plan everything out to the nth degree of if this happens, we do this. If this happens, we do this. If that happens, we do this. But everything is so planned out that they know exactly what to do in any situation and exactly what words to come out of their mouth. And that's what they want, you know, but that's not what sales is like, right? Mm -hmm. You throw somebody into a networking situation. Nobody's going to tell them when to speak. Nobody's going to tell them what to say. Nobody's going to tell them what's going to happen or how to react to it. And a lot of people with those really precise, uh, the really precise um, uh, situations don't know how to react. You know, they, it's not about technique. It's about mindset. So you have to be able to think on your feet and adapt as you can. And, uh, you know, those fighter pilots, of course, if they're used to doing air shows, they want everything mapped out to the T. If they're used to dog fighting, then, of course, everything becomes do whatever you can do with what you got to work with right now. <laughs> right? Yeah. Adapt to the situation and do whatever you think is best. And, uh, John, I'm going to send you an email from Anna Marie because she's trying to get in and uh, can't. So... If you can send her the link, that would be ideal. Um, so that's uh, why that's we spend. Yeah. I didn't get it. Okay. Sorry. I'll cut this bit out. If we can help her get in, that would be good. But Or just respond in Basecamp and send her the link, whatever is easy. But um, let me send that to you again. Da, 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 da. Okay. So um, mindset. Uh, what is it about? What does it? Uh, what does it mean? So uh, you know, fact number one is that the aviation industry needs you. There is a labor shortage going on right now. Uh, and sometimes it doesn't feel like that if we are in a situation where we're trying to sell our services and nobody seems to want to buy, right? Uh, <laughs> but the fact is that there are people that need what we do. We just need to make that connection with the right people at the right time, which is more difficult than it appears to be. So if you're not making those connections, your skills are being wasted. Uh, so, you know, that's why we need to go to the networking events. That's why we do the SEO. That's why we do the social media. That's why we make 100 connections every week on LinkedIn. Uh, all of those things, because if we are connected to enough people in the industry, chances are somebody needs what we do because the numbers say so. If we believe that, uh, you know, then that changes the way we do things. If we don't believe that, we're not going to do the phone calls. We're not going to do the LinkedIn. We're not going to do any of the things that we're supposed to be doing because we feel like it's a waste of time, right? No. Nope. Yeah. Um, so no matter how many times, um, you know, people tell us if you do X, Y, and Z, it's going to have a positive effect. So, you know, I go to the gym, I come home, I look in the mirror, I don't see any difference. Or I go to the gym or, okay, here's a better one. I eat a salad <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I eat nothing but salad all day. And then I jump on the scale and it's going to be exactly the same as it was yesterday. Uh, and that's because we're looking for that immediate um, gratification. We're looking for evidence that what we did is working. And in our industry, it takes eight months, you know, from first contact to sale. Right. And that's, a crazy amount of time that's even worse than dieting you know where it takes what six weeks to notice a difference on the scale or you know six weeks yep. of going to the gym before you notice a difference there so six weeks you can deal with eight months is you know a shocking amount of time so it really takes a strong character to be able to do what we we need to do for for eight months and uh you know make sure that that's actually working Okay, so um, all of us have three aspects of our personality, right? We have our skills, you know, or uh, Mark, in your case, you've got your appraisal skills. Uh, you know, you've got your credentials, you've got your knowledge of, of your craft uh, and other things like that. You also have a set of skills as a business owner. And then you have a set of skills as a leader. You know, how effective are you at persuading people to do 
what you need them to do. And all three of these need to be need to be great. You know, they need to be over the top if we're going to have a successful company. Uh, not everybody can do this. Not everybody can be a successful business owner and not everybody can be a successful leader of or a persuasive leader of people. So, um, you know, in one of our networking groups, we met a doctor, you know, who had more degrees than anybody uh, could even imagine having spent that much time in school. Do you remember this, John, this lady uh, in the peak performers group? Yep. And she felt like, you know, because she was the most qualified doctor in the room, she should not have any trouble running a successful business and getting customers for her practice. Uh, but, you know, the truth was she was amazing in this area and she really, really sucked in these two areas. <laughs> she was not convincing. Uh, you know, she was not charismatic. She was not helpful to other people. Uh, you know, she was not any of those things. And, uh, you know, so that was, that was the problem and she eventually caught on and, uh, now she actually does have a, a fairly successful practice, um, and was able to get to that point, but she came in with this attitude of being entitled to people doing business with her, you know, and that came out when she was talking to us, when she was talking to potential customers, we did some cold calling in that, you know, role-playing in that course. And you could tell she just, you know, if people had objections or whatever or concerns or anything else, she just dismissed them. She said, you know, oh, that's not a problem. You just, you know, should definitely sign up with my program because it's going to help you. Um, so, you know, you definitely have to uh, have these other sets of skills in order to be successful. Does that make sense? John, do you remember that, that lady? The one like that. <laughs> Exactly. Outside, that was a uh, client outside of aviation. Oh yeah, she was a doctor. Um, you know, and she was uh, had MDs, PhDs, psychology, all of these kinds of things, and she was trying to get um, clients as a um, what would you call that? A life coach or a um, you know helping people lose weight and improve their life and everything else and so forth. And, uh, you know, so she was very, very qualified. So she had these skills, you know, we could substitute this for medical skills or, uh, you know, her craft, her trade, whatever you want to call it. But she was a stinky business owner uh, because she didn't understand the need to uh, do the accounting, do the uh, metrics, do the um, the marketing and everything else. And she didn't have any leadership skills because she couldn't persuade anybody of anything because she didn't have any real interest in people beyond herself. If they weren't a potential customer, she had no curiosity, no charisma, no nothing, yeah. you know, just flat. I got you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's something you can develop. You know, you can become interested in other people. You can become more interesting. You can become somebody that cares about other folks and, you know, uh, get into all of that. And you can become more persuasive as well. So um, that's one set of of things that that we wanted to to mention. When I um yeah I sold the Lear this I sold a Learjet a couple of years ago just uh -huh. before the pandemic. And I had um read David uh I think his name's David get more of the sales bible. Yeah. <clears throat> and the one thing I picked up on it because I you know I I didn't really like aircraft. I didn't like being in sales per se. Yeah. And uh but he has uh, the one thing I got out of that takeaway out of that book was it was that it says if you make a friend, you make a million. You know, you make a million. Mm -hmm. You know, or, but if you're just focusing on closing the uh, closing the deal, um, you know, you get you know, you just you know, you don't make a friend and you don't make future business if you're just trying to close close your deal. Yeah. So right after I read that, this guy, pilot called me from California in the evening, and um, we just ended up chatting away. He, he was personable, and we had this great conversation for two or three hours. That was a long time, and yeah. I was like, and I was, you know, I said, yeah, you know what? I don't care if he buys this airplane or not, um, but I would like to make a friend out of this if possible. Yeah. And he ended up buying the airplane. Exactly. That's a great example. And uh, yeah. you, 
people can smell that, you know, I mean, if you were just trying to get the deal and, you know, that was this lady's problem is, you know, she just had no interest in people unless they were going to become a customer. And, uh, you know, people could tell it was like, get in or get out. <laughs> Don't waste my time. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, a lot of people that hate sales end up with this problem as well, because, you know, their attitude about sales comes across, uh, you know, I hate what I'm doing. And, you know, I, I dislike making calls. I dislike doing this, um, whatever it is. So that's the problem. Yep. Yeah. Um, so what I like to do is just kind of circle and this changes for me, uh, every week or every month, which of these do I need to work on the most, uh, at the moment? And, you know, some, in some cases it's my marketing skills, you know, that I need to get up to speed because something's changed in the industry and I need to learn it. So I need to go take a course on that. It could be the business owner side of things. And actually John does this for us. So, you know, I don't have to lean on that quite so much. Uh, but I do need to make sure that we're doing our Monday meetings, which we haven't been because the schedule has been crazy and, uh, you know, taking care of this side of the business. Uh, and then there's leadership skills, which are, am I being convincing? You know, are people actually reacting well? And the best way to do that is to record calls. So, and Mark, if you wanted to do this, any of our clients uh, can do this and just send me a call after you've recorded it. Um, in Utah, you don't need to inform anybody that you're recording a call as long as you don't broadcast it or don't use it in any other any way besides, uh, you know, your business. And that kind of thing. So I can record a sales call and I can send it to my coach um, and say, you know, what do you see? Where do you see this going south? Where did I lose them? And, uh, you know, what would you recommend that I do better next time? And if you're doing that on a regular basis and just, you know, maybe one call a month or, you know, if you're just starting out a few calls and just say, you know, how did this go? Uh, and uh you know, if it went south or if I didn't get a yes or if I didn't, whatever, could be circumstance or it could be that I should have said something differently or I should have taken the conversation a different direction. So it could be the leadership skills that I need to work on. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, those are the three things. And I know everybody focuses on on the first one because that's the most fun. But the other two are just as important or maybe even more so because you could be the worst marketer in the world and still make a lot of sales or the worst um, pilot in the world and still get the job because, um, you know, of your leadership skills and you're able to deceive people for a certain amount of time about your other skills. People lie on their resume all the time, right? That's a marketing that. document. It's not a legal document. Hopefully not pilots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not pilots or brain surgeons. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm okay. unable to do your request. I keep getting errors from Basecamp. Okay. Um, can you just send Anna Marie a, an an email and just invite her or a text? I don't have her address. Okay. Um, and you can't respond in Basecamp. Nope. It says I'm I'm not anybody they know about. Okay. Let me uh, see if I can do this uh, really quickly. I apologize. This is da, 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 da. no rush. Take your time. Okay. okay. One moment. <laughs> I mean, I can log into Basecamp and I can do that, but I can't get this in there. Okay. I have a re I can find her email if you need it. That's okay. I just sent it, so I think we're good. Um. Okay, so we'll see if she jumps in or not. But uh, okay, so um, step three, rituals. Uh, you know, and this is not hooky, goofy stuff. This is this is actually uh, very very powerful. And a lot of people have been talking on LinkedIn and other places about you know their morning ritual. They get up and they do this and they read for thirty minutes and they do yoga and they drink coffee or they don't drink coffee or, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what they are as long as they work for you. And um, a lot of the people that we talk to, most of the people that we turn down for marketing services are the ones that say, you know, I'm too busy or tired to make any changes to what I'm doing currently. I'm not going to change anything. I need you to do it for me. And we will say it doesn't work that way. 
um, you know, you need to be making the calls. You need to be doing the things. You need to be um, growing your network on LinkedIn. You need to be executing a prospecting plan. If you are not able to do that, then that's the first thing that needs to change. Talk to us in six months when you get your life together, uh, quite frankly, you know, and all of us get off track for one reason or another because we're traveling or because we're sick or because, uh, you know, something happens or, you know, we have a sick kid or whatever. But these are the five things that you really need to to keep track of. And any one of these things falls off and it messes up your performance. And, you know, they've been doing this in aviation for many, many years. Um, if That's why the FAA mandates rest requirements and things like that. So, you know, are you getting any sleep? Do you have family time every week? You know, are you able to manage your um, your stress levels? Do you do a meditation practice or a religious practice or whatever it is that works for you? Um, are you exercising? You know, are you going for a walk? Are you overusing uh, any substance? Uh, whatever it is, no judgment. It's just you know that's that's the reality of of what it does for you. Um, finances is a big thing with salespeople at an organization I used to work with, all of the salespeople were driving the latest BMW, you know, and they were, they had big houses and they had country club um, memberships and all of this stuff. And they were spending way beyond their means. And one of them actually told me, I have to stay in debt so that I will stay motivated. So I will keep my numbers up so that I can get out of debt when I decide to retire, you know, and that to me was like the craziest thing I've ever heard. Um yeah. Yeah, John, you remember that organization, right? Yes, I do. And I was driving my Ford um, Ranger, which I love. You know, I love that truck, but it was so out of place in that parking lot because everybody else is driving these really expensive um, Ferraris and Maseratis and BMWs and everything else. And I've got my little Ford, Ford Ranger, but I have to be comfortable. You know, I know myself. I have to be living within my means and, um, you know, so that I know that I can spend two hundred dollars on a course or a thousand dollars on a on a piece of software or whatever it is that I need to do in order to run my business. And if I don't have those margins, I start to feel weird, you know, and I start to it starts to show up and as panic in my voice when I'm making sales calls and I start to sound desperate and all of those things. So I have to be comfortable in order to be effective as a salesperson. Yeah. And some people don't, you know, they have to be on the edge in order to be effective as a salesperson. But I don't think that's the way to do it. You know, I mean, personally, I think in the aviation industry, we have a long sales cycle. Uh, we can't be burning through leads. We can't be desperate and we can't sound desperate. We can't smell desperate uh, because people can see that, you know, that's why we say it's 80% mindset and 20% technique because what you say doesn't matter nearly as much as what you feel and what people feel from you. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. yep. Yeah. My plan going forward is to, uh, do my sales calls, um, in the mornings, you know, from eight thirty ish nine to about 11. Ah, smart. And I guess if I do that, so that's what I'm gearing up for hopefully for next week. Fantastic. So that's when you feel um, the most energetic and positive and. Um, yeah. Okay. That's well, amazing. And, and then that way, like, yeah, more of a, anyway, that will, uh, to me, that's the best use of my time. Yeah. It takes me a while to get rolling. I'm not an, uh, I'm not one of these 5 a.m. people that gets up and likes to work out and, you know, watch the sun rise and all that stuff. That's not me. <laughs> not a morning person. I'm right there with you. So I, by the time yeah. my cobwebs are cleared out around uh, 8, 8 o'clock, I would knock out those calls. Mm -hmm. And then I can, you know, get into my day from there. Yeah. Right. I I appreciate that. I actually almost never schedule office hours before 10 or 11 a.m. 
uh, our time. And that's so that I can do my morning stuff and do a workout and all of that stuff. And then I feel like I can give our clients my best, you know, because I'm together, I'm, uh, I'm up, I'm positive, everything's working for me. Uh, I've eaten, you know, <laughs> I'm not hangry. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some coffee in me, you know, all of those things are are a big deal. And yeah, um, you know, I love this line, your business can only rise to the level of the leader, whoever that is. And if you're a one person business, that's you, you know, you've got to invest in yourself first, because if you are not taking care of the rest of the stuff, it is never going to outperform you, uh, you know, if you're not doing well uh, in other areas of your life. Okay, um, step four how you win, right? Um, so a lot of this feel like, uh, you know, or a lot of people that start working with us say, you know, I run a flight school, our planes rent for 145 an hour, then the school down the street runs their planes for 135 an hour. I can't do that because my expenses are different. So I will never win uh, this game. You know, it's a commodity. Nobody cares what it is, they just care how much it costs, right? Uh, that is not true, right? Um, if you look at the generic version of anything versus the branded version of everything, you can add value to something by adding specifics, right? Um, by being more specific to the type of person that you are tailoring your product or service to, by adding history to that, you know, adding stories behind that, adding um, other things, you know, the Harley Davidson, to be honest, and John's going to probably argue with me here, is probably not the most high performance, value driven, objectively perfect motorcycle. Yeah. Agree? Uh, <laughs> <what? Right? laughs> if you look at just the numbers of you know a ducati versus a harley or you know depending on what what uh, which model you're comparing one to one yeah. there are better motorcycles out there probably in any maybe. objective criteria maybe okay <laughs> <laughs> all right but you see what i'm saying you know everybody wants yeah. the harley davidson because they know it. yeah they know somebody who has one they like the culture around it they like the feeling uh that uh, that they get when they when they ride a harley they've seen harley commercials they've been to harley rallies uh all of that is they've been in movies you know i mean it's just uh, a cool thing american made yep american made you know there are things about it that are special so, you know, whatever your product or service is, you have to emphasize about it what makes it special. Uh, so, you know, I mean, it's, uh, is your product or service the generic motorcycle or is it the Harley Davidson in your market? And if it's not, how can you make that the Harley Davidson? You can add more service, you can add more um, convenience, you can make it uh, more reliable, you can do a lot of different things, add training with it. Um, so that, you know, when you do an appraisal for somebody, maybe you spend an hour with them with a consultation, you know, telling them, this is how I arrived at this number. And these are the the factors that went into it so that they understand it better than when somebody else did the appraisal and just hands them the piece of paper. Um, mm -hmm. You know, whatever you can do to make that a better version of, of whatever it is that you do, uh, you can make that the commodity or not the commodity, you can make that the, the branded item. Yep. Cool. Okay. Um, last one is your why, and this is the hardest part. Uh, and we're reading the book, uh, Simon Sinek's, uh, you know, start with why. And uh, this is what comes across when you talk to people, you know, why are you doing what you do? And if it's just to make a buck, John and I were actually talking about this the other day when we were talking about like net jet pilots. I shouldn't say net jet pilots, but pilots for certain organizations are treating it as a job. Um, you know, and you can tell that they're treating it as a job and they're treating passengers as sacks of potatoes or whatever. You know, it's just a um it's a buck to them. You know, it's it's a time clock that they're punching and they're just going through the motions and doing the job, right? And that's the worst thing in the world for a pilot to be doing because 
they're going to make mistakes and they're not going to put in the um, the time and the energy to prepare for a flight and study the weather and do all of the things that they should be doing, right? Yep. Yeah, when I tried to get into the corporate flying world, everybody was coming out of the military and they were willing to fly anything, anywhere, anytime for nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, not nothing, but basically salary didn't matter to them. They just wanted to fly. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand that. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't live on it, so I didn't do that. Right. So, yeah, I mean, this is something that, you know, you really have to discover, you know, within yourself, because otherwise you're just going to be putting in the, the hours, you know, and stuff. And that is not what makes this magical you know i mean it doesn't make you successful unless you are something better than everybody else who's punching a time clock right um so yeah you're going to run into obstacles you're going to get angry with your customers you're going to get angry with your team you're going to get angry with us your marketing people <laughs> you're going to get angry with everybody at some point in our first year of working together or our second or third or fifth or twelfth um so, yeah, I mean, there's going to be moments when you're putting in 80% of the work and you're not getting even 20% of the results out because of the way things stack up. And uh, it's just really, really difficult uh, to get through that unless you know what you're doing and why, you know, um, are you doing this just to make a buck or are you doing this because, um, you know, as I always say, people in the aviation industry are going to fail if they don't do this right. And the other marketing companies, I think, are doing it wrong and they're going to make people fail. And so we need to help them. Uh, you know, we need to help people become successful. And that is what turns me on is seeing those numbers go up and seeing clients, you know, having clients tell me I got a new client. Um, you know, I feel a whole lot better about this. Things were working out. Um, you know, and things like that. That's what really turns me on is those those positive reviews and those those things where they they tell me that they were able to succeed in this industry because this is not an industry that is doing well right now. You know, we've got a labor shortage, we've got financial problems, we got all kinds of things, perception problems, we got environmentalists in France who are splashing orange paint on everything, we got all kinds of problems happening and people don't get into aviation because it's easy they get into it because they can't not right um because they love it right they love the people they love the industry and all of that so anyway i tried to, i tried to get out and went to law school <laughs> yeah how'd that go back in aviation <laughs> you're back <laughs> been back and i've never really left uh-huh well, that's uh, that's great, and it's because of some reason, right? I don't know if you feel comfortable sharing your reason, or if that's uh, something you have thought about yet. Which reason? What are we talking about? The reason you're in business, the reason you do what you do, the reason you put oh. up with all this crap. <laughs> what gets you out of bed in the morning? Yeah, the um. Well, when I do get the appraisal work, mm -hmm. especially you know when it was really starting to take off was I'm like, wow, this is what I was meant to do. Ah, there you go. All the, all the going, all the time that I spent, you know, I went back to college late in life, mm -hmm. uh, including that year of law school. <clears throat> then the, all the time it took to get certified and the money and yeah. all of that. Um, and then, um, then I got brought on into aircraft sales to try it mm -hmm. and with Miami jet. So I did, I was getting work that way too for a while, but not a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, um, yeah, I was appraising a, a, a G, G4 or G5 and, uh, they'd set me up in the office. I knew what I was doing. I had all my paper, you know, I was just doing my thing. And I was making, I mean, it was like a $5,000 gig. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, this is perfect. I just need a little more of it. <laughs> there you go. Fantastic. Well, John probably remembers. God bless, God bless yeah. Jeremy. Yeah. But I didn't, 
I've never, I don't, I didn't, I'm not interested in working at his level mm -hmm. of appraisals. You know, it's, it's I, I think he, you know, it's just the stuff that he told me anyway, that he was numbers that were really all, just too much. Yeah. Um, for me. Well, but I yeah. was looking to carve out, I'm looking to carve out, you know, a third of what he did for business. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, he was one of a kind. And, you know, obviously his calling was very different uh, than the rest of us. I mean, you know, if he somebody called him about an appraisal, he was getting on an airplane and he's yeah. booking tickets with one hand while he's talking on the phone with the other. And it didn't matter if it was Saudi Arabia or darkest Africa or or, uh, you know, Southeast Asia or or anywhere else. And it didn't matter if he had any sleep between this job and the next. And he was, uh, you know, an amazing character and just lived for the, lived for the, uh, the thrill yep. of the chase, I guess, you know, which is great. So, um, a lot I, of his appraisals he was doing, um, at home he was, mm -hmm. when I talked to him last. Yeah. Was, but yeah, he, had, I know he did the, he would also, you know, drop everything and travel too. Right. We did a map for him one year of, you know, the appraisals that he'd done that year. And it just looked like the map was covered with pins. Yep. Uh, the whole world was covered with pins. But uh, yep. John remembers when, um, you know, we got into marketing. I was in finance, you know, the finance industry and kind of miserable. And uh, I got into a class and I'm like, I want to spend, what, $3,000 on this class plus travel. And uh, John was like, are you sure? <laughs> but you were 100% for it once uh, we decided that. And then I bought like 100 books that year and read about 100 books on, you know, from the book list suggested for this course. And we took this course and um, decided to get into marketing for aviation uh, because marketing for finance is just no fun. It was not my why. And, you know, I was making plenty of money, but. I wasn't happy, you know, it wasn't people that I liked helping. Um, you know, I wasn't a hundred percent on board with the ethics of the finance industry and it showed, you know, I was, I was punching a clock. So here, you know, I, I just love working with, you know, being able to, to pick our clients and, and work with them and, and everything else. And it's just so much more satisfying. And, um, John was telling me this morning, you know, it's nice to see you liking what you do, you know, again, which, yeah. is, which is great. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm really excited about this call I received yesterday. Yeah. Um, I think he has this, this, uh, he has potential, um, you know, not only for uh, additional clients for you, because he's tapped into that whole uh, New York City mm -hmm. market. Oh, fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then uh, and then I, you know, I said, you know, I said I was asking him about other, you know, you know, he does the buyer's agent, but I said, well, do you use anybody to do? I know I do the appraisals, but I also can, you know, oversee pre buys and such. And he goes, well, I have a, I use a management company, mm. so. I, I, they manage the aircraft and then I oversee the management for the, my clients. Mm -hmm. So he would, said he's going to hook me up with the management company. So, you know, for, you know, hopefully some additional like pre buy, you know, or maintenance oversee, see over, oversee maintenance, uh, you know, additional income stream. Plus, you know, plus if he's, he has a lot of, uh, you know, sounds like, you know, might lead to uh, some appraisals also. Cool. Yeah. I mean, just a few of those contacts, um, you know, sometimes one can turn your whole business around if they've got enough, uh, enough business. Yeah. Your one and the call. email looks really good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I sent it to Don. It you know, shows uh, last night. I said, well, you check out the email. Um, and it shows all the different podcasts that we've done. You know, mm -hmm. they look, you know, and it worked because he saw that and he saw all the air, you know, you know, taking all his time to get to this point. Yeah. But um, he saw we're on Spotify and this, you know, all those platforms. 
Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, wow, the email failed. I'm calling him directly. Yeah. And he was like, yep, hook me up. I want to I want to do a podcast. I love the name. Mm -hmm. Cocktail, good idea. And let's roll. So, Excellent. Yeah. Well, and that that podcast was inspired, you know, that uh, Contrails and Cocktails. That was a really good idea because it is unique and it really shows that you're different. You know, that goes back to this whole. Yeah. Not every appraiser does something like this. You know, this is this sets you apart uh, as the Harley Davidson, you know. Because uh, you got something different, special, and cool. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And I also there was another one that signed up yesterday. Um, John Davies just signed up yesterday as well. So I need to uh, get you the uh, calendar invites for those. So that'll be fun. Yep, but the, okay. this guy Jeffrey is definitely, I think, a good um, candidate for both of us. Mm -hmm. Great. Donna and I already designed the um, cocktail last night. Oh, fun. <laughs> yeah, that, that's such a, a fun angle. Um, and, you know, I know we've had some some concerns about, you know, is this going to appeal to everybody? But you can always do a mocktail if, if somebody wants to uh, go that, that yeah. direction. Yeah, throwing that in. Mm -hmm. So last um, point I wanted to make, and then, uh, you know, we'll... Um, end the, the workshop and go on to whatever you want to talk about. But uh, um, Circle, you know, it's our private social media. You can announce anything you want to announce. A lot of people are using it as their uh, accountability partner, you know, uh, or coming up with an accountability partner saying, here's what I'm doing this week. They do their wins Wednesdays or whatever. Um, here are the things that I am committing to. And here are the things that I accomplished. And uh, those kinds of things. Or if you want to run something by people and say, hey, you know, should I run this post or that post? Or should I wear this hat or that ha hat on this podcast? Or, you know, whatever it is that you uh, have a question about. Um, that's a, a great way to get input from everybody on Circle either works for us or is a client. So, okay. yeah. And that's just circle.aviationbusinessconsultants.com. Um, you get a link to that in an email every Wednesday from us. So that's cool. And course portal, we've got, go ahead. The circle, can I get into the circle from um, the app? There is a, an app for circle for the iPhone. I don't know if there is one for Android yet. No, the, um, uh, what do you call it? The app you use to run everything. Basecamp? Basecamp, yeah. Um. You can go backwards, but I don't know that you can go forwards. That's actually a good idea. We should put links to Circle on Basecamp. Good idea. Okay. Thank you for that. I will put that in. Uh, and so then in the, the meantime, how do I get into Circle? It is. I'm going to put it in the chat window. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm going to screenshot it so I don't forget it. Yeah, it's just circle.aviationbusinessconsultants.com. And uh, it's in the chat window as well. And you get an email once a week, you know, with this is what's going on with the, the team and, and everything else. And our Wins Wednesday emails all have a, a link to, to Circle in them. So that's cool. Did you get that? I'm opening up the chat. Okay. John, did you get it? Did it work for you? Uh, I just typed in, it's automatic online. I okay. browser capture it, so I didn't find that, but I can. Okay. Okay, I'm going to screenshot it. Excellent. Great. Yes. And then the course portal, you know, of course, the sales fundamentals course. A lot of this material is the, in the introduction of the aviation sales fundamentals course, so you can skip over that if you want to and uh, just go straight to the other stuff in sales basics. If you wanted to take the fundamentals course, you're already maybe a fifth of the way through it from today's workshop. So.